Hey, 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 welcome back to Mirror Expressions, a channel where I take the time to share a little bit of myself with you all, and I invite y'all to come on in and do the same with me. Go ahead, hit thumbs up for me, subscribe to the channel if you haven't, and let your girl K know how you're doing, right? If you have looked at a mirror today and you are feeling A-OK -okay with what you see looking back at you, go ahead and drop me a mirror emoji in the chat because I want to know. I want to know that my YouTube family is doing good. But if you're not feeling your best, always, 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 I'm going to encourage you to do what you must to get to a healthier version of yourself because A, hey, you got to protect your mental at all costs. All right, y'all. Let's get into it. Married at First Sight, UK, Season 7, Episode 5. We got a supersized episode this time. You know, they gave us two hours instead of the one. So, we see the experts discussing the next few couples to be paired. We got um, their first lesbian couple er ever, Jenna and Zoe. So, um, excuse me, you all. So Zoe wants someone who is feminine, strong, and ambitious. Ambitious. Sorry, I talk with a lisp. So, I, I get words like shh with a shh, like ambitious, <laughs> ambitious, or shh, fish. It, I, I get a little tongue tag. That's all. Forgive me. Just keep it, keep it rolling. Look over me. Keep it rolling. We all got some things in. I ain't ashamed about it. It is what it is. You know what I'm saying? So anyway, she's a little cutie, I say. Um, she really is Zoe. Um, but she says she the dating scene uh where she lives is pretty slim. Like I think she said there's like five lesbians and two of them her are her friends and the other two are married. So yeah, she said the pickings are slim. And so the one thing that she's missing in her life because she feels like she's got everything else in order, like dream job, home, and all that. But the one thing she's missing is her forever person. Um, her parents are together and they have just monitored the ideal relationship before her. And so she says that she wants what they have, right? So then we got Jenna. She says she feels like she's single because she spent most of her 20s dating men when she was, in fact, gay, you know. She says she has alopecia, and so she has to wear wigs or whatever, and that that has affected her and her how she kind of interacts with other people. And so she says she wants a soft butch to meet her at the end of the aisle. Soft butch, okay. And then, uh, so Mel says that Jenna and Zoe are both optimistic when it comes to finding love. And that they, um, she, she says she thinks that when they see each other for the first time that their eyes will lock and it will be electric. Electric bubble. Okay. <laughs> electric. Okay. I think I have looked into the eyes of my soulmate and it was electric. <laughs> he just don't know what you. <laughs> oh, just kidding. Okay. So the next couple is Keisha and Kwame. Is it Kwame or Kwame? Kwame, I think. Anyway, Keisha. Owns her own body contouring clinic, right? She had a child when she was just a child herself, 16 years of age. She said she didn't grow up with any uh with a strong male prison like her dad, and that um that has played a huge part in how she is in relationships. You know, however, she does have her granddad that she leans on heavily, and he was there for her. And uh, definitely a positive male figure in her life. So, she wants to be married to a black man. Uh, specifically, West African heritage. Don't play with her. <laughs> that has his ish together. She wants facial hair and a strong presence. And she said she wants to be with somebody that she can be a, uh, become a power couple with. Right, so Kwame, 
Kwame's father is Ghanaian. He is a business businessman business man that also runs a talk show with one of his good friends. And so he has two children from a previous marriage. So they're both coming into the marriage with children. And he wants an Oh Lord, this is what he says. He wants an Instagram model that would be the perfect wife. Baby. And he goes on to say he wants the female version of himself. Now, just off top what he said right there. I could be wrong and it could change, but right now. He's coming across kind of shallow and superficial. Like to say, I want an Instagram model that can be a, a wife. Like to me, because Instagram models is all about the looks. That We already know that. But if you're agreeing to meet somebody at first sight, or married, marrying somebody at first sight, it can't totally be all about the physical looks for you. You know what I'm saying? So you got to be willing to let that go. And then to go on and say he wants to date the female version of himself. Like this just kind of comes across like. Like you're not open to. People differing from you. Like you feel like you are the epitome of it all. And if somebody is not that the same as you then you don't want them whether they could be the epitome of their own lives like rocking it out however they are with their personalities and the things that they do you know what i'm saying like mm, this is off time just kind of what i felt when he said those things so uh Charlene, the expert, said that they will be a power, powerful couple that will have a great synergy, family values, and on the same page when it comes to their careers, right? So Mel points out that with such strong personalities that there is a potential for them to clash a lot or have power struggles. And as we're going to see by the end of this episode, they do kind of end up in a power struggle, but she still thinks that even with the potential for that, that they are still a strong match. So we catch a glimpse of them telling their friends and family that they'll be getting married at first sight, right? That they only, um, the only one that kind of really stuck out with this part was Keisha. Um, none of the others really had anything interesting, but she went to tell her grandfather and her brother, right? And so, um, when she told her, told them, the granddad was like, why? And so, Keisha just, like, broke down. Like, she broke down in tears. Like, so, we see her granddad and her brother kind of support her, try to, you know, uplift her and comfort her. And then she asks if he will walk her down the aisle, her grandfather. And granddad said, yes, you know, and the brother told the experts, <laughs> that they better steer clear if this goes wrong because uh brother coming for you <laughs> he come, he said he coming for you oh my goodness not the brother out here threatening threatening the people threatening the people <laughs> why they sitting up there and they matching my adidas <laughs> baby they did they had their little matching red adidas pants on I said, well, all right then, granddaddy and brother. So it's wedding day, right? And Jenna, we see her getting ready. She's having anxiety about telling her spouse that she has alopecia. Kwame, he's getting ready with his best man. And um, his best man said that Kwame is looking for a whole lot of different things than one person. And he says he always tell him that that may be quite difficult to find. So, in other words, he's being unrealistic with his expectations. Mm, okay. Uh, <laughs> Car Keisha's granddad said that he is one proud grandfather. I said, oh, such a sweet moment. Because when he saw her, he ended up crying. I said, oh, this is baby, y'all. This is baby. And Keisha said that she is open. She hopes that this, this is the man of her dreams and that she has a lot to offer. And she hopes that they both will give it their all, right? 
So then we see them get married, Keisha and Kwame. They're the first wedding we see. The guests of Pala in and her friends are uh -huh. looking at his side of the family like they peeping them out, right? It's so <laughs> it's so uh his mom, her mom leans over to one of the friends and was just like, uh I, uh, no, no, no. I think what before they happened, I think one of the friends was just like, uh, I hope he ain't sure like his family because <laughs> Keisha would have a fit. So when he walks in, that's when mama leaned over to her best friend. It was just like, you know, what do you think? What do you think Keisha would feel like, you know? And so the best friend was like, mm, I'm not going to say it's the no, but it's not a thousand percent yes. Like, he's a bit slim for her liking. It would be better if he was taller and bigger. I said, oh, Lord, like, come on, y'all. Y'all got to let some of that go. Again, you're putting all of this in the hands of the experts. So, you got to let some of that go. And, baby, I don't know what she's talking about. He could be bigger because that thing is together. Kwame. I'm loving it, boo. So Kwame's at the altar. And I just said, can I in just insert that those shoes that Keisha had on? Them things were bad, baby. When she stepped out that car and we saw her shoe, I was like, oh my gosh, girl. Those things are gorgeous. They are gorgeous. So anyway, so cute. So he's at the altar waiting. Granddad takes his baby by the arm and he's walking her down. And so, so they turn around, see each other. And she immediately starts to size this man up. Like, I mean, she's not even trying to be inconspicuous about it or anything. Like, she is literally like... <laughs> like... Uh, Okay, so Kwame said that, uh, Kwame ends up saying that, uh, Keisha is about 70% of what he expected. So again, he has to, he's basing all of this off of looks because at this point, I don't even think they have said hello to each other. So you know nothing else about her than what you see. And so if that is 70, 70%, like, come on. Like, that should be held holding less weight than everything else she has to offer. That should be holding less weight than all the things you cannot see about her. Especially in a process like this. But anyway, he said, yeah, she got about 70% of what he expected. But he did say he felt that was off to a good start. Like, again, he's just kind of coming across the wrong way for me. I really did like his vows, though. Like, it didn't seem like those generic vows that people just kind of pull off the internet. Like, I think, was that last season we had two couples read the exact same vows? They done wrote down off the internet. But anyway, he made it very personal. Like, he talked about hearing Roberta, Roberta Flack um, all the time when he was growing up. Uh, the the uh, first time I saw your face. And so, yeah, he kind of just wrote his his uh, vows around there. And it was just, I really liked it. I liked that it, it was just not generic and he made it personal to him. And so um, they share a kiss at the altar. And so Keisha was like, okay, he has potential. Over with Zoe and Jenna, when, uh, Jen, when Zoe turns around, she literally lets out like the biggest sigh of relief, baby. She's like, she was holding her breath the whole time. It was just like, <sighs> I take it she is pleased with what she sees, right? So she said that Jenna is everything she hoped for. And Jenna said, well done, experts. Well done. So they are both pleased. And they, um, undoubtedly kiss at the altar like when was no hesitation with that so they kiss after their nuptials and so as they're taking their pictures they start to discuss um did the other get what they asked for in a mate and so of course they both say yes 
So it's, re it's reception time at Keisha and Kwame's wedding. And they have the African drums going. And uh, she has her kente cloth on. He already had his. So her best friend asked Kwame, what did he ask for in a mate, right? And he said he was very broad with what he wanted other than a shapely woman. But he looks more, but then he looks more at characteristics. Okay. So I'm ain't adding up. Like, cause you said that you wanted this, that, and the other, and basically a, a woman version of yourself. And now you saying, or, or what do you say, an Instagram model. And now you saying, you just said you wanted somewhat shapely. You were very broad at what you wanted. Like, say what now? <laughs> oh. Anyway, she then asked if Keisha was what he wanted. And so he said part of it, you know, and best friend was like, hold up, you know. And Keisha said, I prefer the honesty. And Kwame said, well, that he is looking for a unicorn. And baby, yes, you are. And as we all know, all know they do not exist. So there's that. So what you going to do? What you going to do? You're going to either settle for something less than unicorn or you're going to be by yourself for the rest of your life and just be in and out of relationships or just really need it. Really <laughs> just be out there. I really need it. I just say that. <laughs> okay. How could I say it, it started already with these two? Like, I could see it coming a mile away. Like, literally, I can. So, Zoe and Jenna at their reception, right? Zoe's mom is thoroughly pleased. So, they're discussing Jenna being vegan. Y'all, Joey, I mean, Joey, Zoe literally started to panic. <laughs> <laughs> she was like vegan. She got in her confessional. It was so cute, y'all. She was like, she's vegan. I'm just trying to hold it together. Wait a minute, can she eat eggs? She can't eat eggs. She can't. Oh, <laughs> she was so cute. She was so cute. She was like, this is leaves, vegetables, and fruit. <laughs> hey now. So, back on with Kwame and uh, Keisha. He's mingling with her family, right? And so, um, when it um, got to her mom, you know, the mom told her mom told him, you know, feel free to call me mom. And I said, okay, well, all righty then. Mom said, well, what do you think of my child? And he said, well, She's lovely and beautiful, he said, but it's it's also very early. So then mom asked, well, are you looking forward to the honeymoon? He said, yeah, I've been needing a holiday. So mom was like, but what about you and Keisha? Like, what do you mean you've been needing a holiday? This is supposed to be a honeymoon for the both of you. Like, this isn't just vacation time for you, basically. So sis jumped in and was like, uh... No, nah, it ain't all about you. <laughs> he was like, no, 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 of course not. No, of course not. It's not all in vain. Okay, anyway. <laughs> I don't know why don't things just be popping in my head like that. Them songs like that. But anyways, so Keisha said uh, she just wants him to be serious about her. She wants him to be serious about her because she is serious about him. Right. So over with Zoe and Jenna, they go off for their little private moment. Jenna just really wanted to tell her about her alopecia. And so she ends up spilling it, telling her and how it all kind of started. Like she was, um, it had to, it stemmed from like a car accident or something when she was like 12 years old. 
And so ever since then, it just caused her to have alopecia. And so she says she has learned from dealing with it for so long to not let it define her. And I'm glad about that, girl. You should not let it define you because you are a beautiful individual, honey. And so Zoe was basically, I could give two Fs about it. Like, you know, it doesn't change anything about what I'm trying to have with you, you know. So I'm glad that Zoe responded like that and then i kind of make her feel any type of way about it because again that's something out of her control she has no control and, and like she said it does not define her and who she is i am not my hair okay okay so <laughs> kwame and keisha are getting their private time too and she wants to know about his longest relationship and he tells her that you know hey i have been married before and so she tells him, I'm quite distracted by the tone of your voice. I said, uh-oh. <laughs> uh-oh. Yeah, but then she went on to say, because it's quite attractive. And then I said, whew. Because like I said, I, I can see it started between the two of them already. I can't. I can see it a mile away. So when she said that first part, I was just like, uh-oh. Talking about she distracted by his voice. But then she came back and said, because... It's very attractive. Yeah, she is smitten by him right now. But again, I, I can see it coming a mile away. I don't think they are going to stay in a good place for very long. I just don't see it. And so, um, back with Zoe and Jenna, right? They're settling down. And so, Zoe was like, you know... We technically we're we're technically married, so anything can happen, baby. Zoe says she ready to get it in tonight. On the other hand, Jenna is like, I'm hoping for just some smooches, and that's it. <laughs> so now we see Keisha and Kwame have made it to their suite as well, and they're they're settling down. And so this fight has made up the couch be like he done pulled out the bed in the couch the made it up talking about just in case we don't want to sleep together he said we are playing the slow game and Keisha said intimacy is very important for her and she would struggle if it wasn't for her husband as well and I think we finna have a breakdown with these two about that intimacy level because i can see that she is wanting it <laughs> and he is not at least not right now so now we get to see them on their honeymoon so we see jess and pj they're in the maldives right and they just seem a little awkward right now they're not saying they don't seem to be vibing and I, well, at least she does. She seems awkward. <laughs> and like when we see them together, she just doesn't seem like things are flowing for her naturally. Like he seems pretty relaxed on his end, but her not so much. So, excuse me, in her confessional, she said that there are, are still a few things worrying her. And so she proceeds to name the few things y'all and it's the same things that been, that has been worrying her that he's a stripper and that he lives at home with his mama like we knew that wedding night so don't act like it's so new coming to you like you said you were beyond that like you said you realized you had prejudged him and jumped to conclusion so like girl why are you still hung up on it like, let it go, let it go, let it go. Anyway, so Jenna and Zoe are in Iceland honeymooning, baby. Not my dream honeymoon by any means. Like, take me somewhere hot and by a beach, right? But anyway, they done did the do, y'all. Jenna did come out and say exactly. But baby, she gave up them cookies talking about Oh, I just hope for a little smooches. Uh, Zoe must came in hard and hot, baby. Cause Jenna dropped them, them things out. <laughs> she like come out and say exactly right. But she was just like, yeah, we really enjoyed our night. Winky, wink, wink. Talking about it started off with a bang. I bet it did. Bang, 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 bang.
Shout out to Friday. <laughs> so they're having breakfast, right? And the conversation kind of shifts to how Zoe is eating. Cause we're not Zoe, um, but Jenna is eating because remember she's a vegetarian. So like she's eating scrambled tofu. She has probably some impossible um bacon because it's not meat, it's plant-based. Um, and so Zoe's just kind of asked her, <clears throat> what if she always wants to eat meat? Like, she's she's wondering if Jenna is going to try to flip her to be a, ve a vegan like she is. And so she's just like, what if I want to continue to eat meat? And so then she started asking her about her food, what's on her plate, you know, like what it is and whatever. And so Jenna was like, you want to taste? And Zoe was like, no. And so she asked her about the bacon or something that was on her plate. And so Zoe, I mean, Jenna ends up saying, making a comment where it didn't come from an animal. Uh, no, no animals were killed in the making of it because I think she was making, I think Zoe was making fun of how the bacon looked. That's what it was. And so Jenna came back, well, at least no animals were killed in the process of making it. And so Zoe was like, uh-uh, don't talk to me about no animals, dad, because I don't want to get turned out, turned off of eating meat. Ignorance is bliss, and I'm going to keep eating my pork bacon, basically. <laughs> she said, I would never be vegan. So Jenna did say, that was a little concerning. And I said, now, girl, you can't expect somebody else to be vegan just because that's the choice you made. Like, I don't eat pork or red meat, but my son, I always said I would allow him to make that choice. Like, I was not going to just force that on him. Of course, while he's young and being dependent on me, he was going to eat what I was going to cook in this home. But I was not going to hold him to just eating that alone. Like, once he got old enough to make his decision, I was going to leave that up to him whether he wanted to eat the same way I did or not. However, you know, my son's 12. He's nonverbal. He's still nonverbal. I'm saying still because, baby, we are speaking that into existence that one day he will be able to talk. And so he's still nonverbal. And while I don't cook those things in my home that have like pork or red meat in it, like, if we're out and about or whatever, like, at a restaurant, like, I will allow him to get steak. He loves to eat steaks. Uh, I'll let him get a hamburger or whatever. So, again, I don't hold him to what I'm eating. And, girl, you can't do your spouse like that just because she's your spouse. Y'all are still two separate individuals at the end of the day with your own separate individuals' likes and dislikes. So, girl, get on with that. So, over with Lara and uh, Richie, they're in B Bavaria for their honeymoon. Lara is like me, honey. She was just like, if I had a choice, I would be somewhere hot. And I feel you on that, girl. I definitely feel you on that. So, Lara, she's not feeling Richie. She does not like him romantically. I can see that, like, off top. That's what I'm getting. She's talking about she hosts that could just be friends first. She already said she wasn't wowed by him at the altar. And so, oh, Richie Rich, on the other hand, is coming to her. Like, he coming to her like she's mama talking about, I will come to you with my problems. I have um, any problems I have. I'm going to come to you for support. I'm going to come to you if something doesn't feel right. Like she's my ally and will help me with any problems. And I'm like, mm-mm, mm-mm. Rich, rich, that, that's not what your spouse is for. She is not like your personal therapist. She is not a step in mother figure like no don't don't do that don't do that so anyway so Kwame and Keisha they are still in their honeymoon suite like they haven't left for their honeymoon vacation yet so Keisha uh I said baby let me just insert this right now that thing had her face all dolled up with her little makeup I said she is camera ready acting like she just woke up still in that bed wrapped up in them covers 
Girl, we know you been out there, man. Your makeup's too pretty. <laughs> So anyway, I can't wait to see where they're going to send them for their honeymoon. So they end up receiving like a little note card with their breakfast that told them for their honeymoons, they will be going to the Maldives as well. I said, I wonder if they're going to run into PJ and Jess because that's where they are. But we, I don't think they ever did. But anyway, I was just curious to see or curious to uh, know if they had that was going to happen. So, anyway. Speaking of Jess and PJ. We catch up with them next. So, they're talking about him being a stripper. Like, oh, I'm sick of this conversation. I really am. <laughs> so, they're talking about him being a stripper. And she said she was initially upset because, you know, he would be gone in the evenings and on the weekends when... This time she would want to spend with him. And so he said, well, I will do what it takes. If that means me stopping, then I will. You know, so Jesse, her confessional said, well, we are friends right now. It may go somewhere. It may not. And that's a may not on your end, girl, because you wouldn't even be talking like that if you really weren't feeling him. I mean, if you really were feeling him anyways. So that lets me know, like, no, you... It's already a wash with y'all, pretty much. So, Larry and Richie, we see them waking up, right? I said they do have a beautiful view, but again, I won't lie. It's not my place I would want to vacation in, or, or at least my honeymoon. I ain't going to say vacation. I wouldn't mind, like, going to somewhere cold to vacation. But something special like my honeymoon, baby, no, because... I'm going to want to be out there. Do you hear me? <laughs> so, anyway. Uh, Richard keeps talking about how they have all this chemistry, right? And I said, baby, but by the look of Larry's face, <laughs> that is not a mutual feeling, honey. Because she's, she's not feeling him at all. So, over with Keisha and Kwame. They have made it to the Maldives, and they really do seem better today than they did on their wedding day. Like, for me, it just kind of seemed like mm, they really weren't vibing, you know. And so, today, the vibe seemed a little better between the two of them. So, Keisha said, you know, that she is physically attracted to him. And like, she's touching all over him, just... I love that fine specimen sent from God. <laughs> but Kwame said that sex, you know, can cloud your judgment. And so he says, you know, that they 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 are not here for the foolishness. They are here for the realness. I said, okay, Kwame. Okay. So he said he has to set the tone and the pace so he can get to know her on a dip, deeper level. And again, he's just kind of doing what he wants versus what the two of them want and it seems like they are on two different pages like he doesn't want to have sex but she does but instead of them talking about that he's just kind of making the decision that it's not going to happen and here she is she's as we're going to see like she gets very flirty she's doing things she said like i put on extra makeup today or i wore my sexy red lipstick today or i wore this today you know she's really trying to do things to catch his attention versus y'all two just having that conversation and kind of coming to a mutual agreement about sex like he's not wanting it right now she does like at least talk about it Okay, you know, we could put it off the table. Maybe we'll revisit it then. Or, you know, however y'all want to do it. But at least discuss it versus one person just making the sole decision. Or as he says, I got to set the tone. Like, who's to say that that's up to you? It's two people in a relationship. You know what I'm saying? So, anyway. Over with Larry and Richie, right? They are in uh, the hot tub outside. I said, oh, child. No. Mm-mm. I said, whoo, imagine them getting out, baby. Oh, child, no. Nah. They all got their little winter hat on and everything. <laughs> I said, no, 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 no. So he ends up telling her that he's never been in love so that she may be the first. 
Y'all, when he said that, that smile disappeared so quickly from her face. I was like, oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. So in her confessional, he said that him, I mean, uh, she said uh, that him never being in love is a lot. And it makes her feel pressured about what his idea of love may look like. She said that she doesn't know if she can step up and meet his expectation. She doesn't want to be his everything. It's definitely going to be a big challenge. Over with Keisha and Kwame, they're dancing and drinking. And, and so she said that liquor got her feeling good. It got her feeling hot and sexy. I'm telling you, y'all, she wants this man. And he's not telling her that, no, I don't want to have sex right now. So, honey, because she over there batting her ass. She keep touching him. She keep throwing her body towards him. You know, hoping he going to reach out and touch, you know, touch your neighbor. <laughs> and so, baby, she is trying. Every chance she get, she doing a little something. So, they're out chilling by the pool or whatever. And so, she says that she sees... um things between the two of them like nurturing a plant she was like you know if you don't water it it won't grow she said you have to work and nurture it and he was just like hmm the whole time she was talking hmm. like again sir why don't you just go ahead and tell her what it is so y'all can have that discussion and move forward you know what i'm saying because again she's handing to the sexuals of it all. Like, if you ain't finna give me none, this relationship is not finna flourish, in other words. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. So, um, <clears throat> in his confessional, he just said, you know, he's not ready to give her what she wants. He said that this is not a speedboat. This is a yacht. I said, I heard that, but speedboats can be a lot of fun, too. I'm just saying. <laughs> They really can. I like a good yacht too, you know. <laughs> so over with Jess and PJ, they're going on this romantic boat trip, right? So it's supposed to be romantic. Ain't nothing romantic about it to me. Um, she's still struggling to move past just being friends. So they end up seeing some sharks around the boat. I don't know if that was the purpose or what, but they end up putting on this snorkeling gear so they can go out and swim with the sharks, right? It's not like they were big sharks, you know what I'm saying? And so I've swam with sharks before too. I'm very adventurous like that, but so uh it all becomes dramatic, like the sharks were gonna jump on them, jump in the boat and eat them up and PJ was getting all scared. He was like, baby, I don't do sharks. You know, I don't do sharks. So, but, uh, you know, he's like, he got to, uh, he, he can't let her see him punk. He can't let her see, uh, him punk out and, uh, he got to protect her and step up for her. So, you know, he put his snorkeling gear on too. Like she got hers on. He put his on, right? She go ahead and jump off in that water, right? But at the end of the day, he did not. He was like, head to the now, now, now. <laughs> he said, I'm going to watch you from the sidelines. And baby, that's exactly what he did. He just was on that boat watching. Okay. <laughs> Oh, so of course, Jess is like, I just want somebody who can look after me. Girl, how's that not looking after you? Like, y'all all, all going to have different likes, you know? I said, don't count him out because y'all have different interests. Don't do that because that's all that is. That doesn't mean that he will not look after you, as you like to say, or take care of you. You know what I'm saying? So... But anyways, um, Jenna and Zoe take like a snowmobile out to the middle of nowhere. Like literally, it looks like maybe they were sitting on like this snowy cliff just there. I don't know. And even the view didn't seem like it was worth traveling somewhere there and sitting there just to see a view. They all bundled up. They so bundled up. 
you can't even hear them. Well, we can hear them talking. You can't understand what they're saying because it's coming out so muffled or whatever. So I know Zoe ended up bringing up like wondering how uh, things will be when they get back to reality and how things will be like after the experiment has ended like. She says she is ready, and so they agree not to overthink things, right? Key word, they, key words, they agree not to overthink things, right? So, over with Larry and Richie, they take a horse and carriage ride. <laughs> he said this is the most romantic thing he has ever done in his life, right? Meanwhile, she on the other hand is like... <laughs> yay like literally they think yay like she is not feeling it at all so he's trying to hold her hand and pull her close and get some kisses like she is not enjoying it at all and he's just looking like a little kid over there like happy as a lot like <laughs> and then it's so funny when they get in their confessionals because you would think we are talking about two different couples, y'all. He thinks it's all good and that they have chemistry and everything is on the right track. Meanwhile, she's like, nope. <laughs> Friends first. Maybe something would grow. Not my type. She's not liking what he's playing it. Like, you know. So, she doesn't want to be physical with him. Not just sex, but like simple Things like holding hands, like kissing, just snuggled up, being boot, booed up. No, I ain't finished that. Being booed up. And so, y'all, on this horse ride, y'all, we, the camera, I these camera people, these, this production just as shady as the American Married at First Sight. So, they catch him up close trying to give her a kiss, like two or three times. He kept. <laughs> and every time y'all she was turning their head like nope <laughs> oh but then she get in her confessional and she's just like he's all in and I'm all in but I'm just at a chiller level oh, okay that's what we calling it a chiller level baby Lara you are not all in honey you are not. So, I'm just like, uh-uh. She, she just doesn't like him. She doesn't. And the thing is, honey, that is a-okay. Like, you ain't got to like him, but don't, don't be doing him like that. Like, go just tell him what's up. Because, honey, he is over there like a kid in a candy store. Like, he's having his first teenage love, baby. So, over with Keisha and Kwame, right? They're, they're having them a little romantic dinner, too. So, she is still talking about she's ready for things to go down, baby. She is she's ready. That, that kitty is meowing. Do you hear me? <laughs> she in heat. I took her because me and my sister just talked about that. Baby, she is in heat. <laughs> She is the heat. That thing is howling. <laughs> so, at the table, she brings up, right, how she notices that it takes them a long time to get ready. She was just like, it even takes you longer than me, even when I have I am doing my uh, makeup or whatever. And so, he was just like, yeah, because, you know, I like to look sexy and I have to have time to shave because I shave everywhere, right? So, Keisha was like, oh, well, I wouldn't know. Catch that. So, I'm glad she said something, like, even if it is kind of indirectly, but maybe we're going to get this conversation going about the sexuals of it all now. So, she says that. She was like, oh, I wouldn't know. So, he takes this opportunity. I'm glad he did. Good job, Kwame, to explain to her why he wants to take things slow. So he says that he just knows himself and that he gets bored quick and easy. I see it. Oh, see, that's another thing that's going to be a problem. 
He told her that her judgment is being clouded by sex. How's her judgment being clouded? Like she... Y'all haven't done anything at this point. You know, she's just desiring you, which I think he likes that she is. So anyway, she said at this point, she doesn't like, even know how he feels about her. He, She said he's good at talking to talk. Okay, so he ain't walking that walk either. Over with Jenna and Zoe, right? They're taking a dip in one of the hot springs. And so now the two of them have agreed to not overthink things, right? I told y'all, key words. They agreed to not overthink. But yeah, here we are. And that's exactly what they're doing. They are talking about these what ifs. Like just chill and get to know one of you one another like enjoy each other's presence like girl deal with them what ifs when and if they ever come up so zoe in her confessional said that jenna is the perfect match but she does have concerns and it's good that they are discussing them <sighs> now they are kind of just talking about this respecting each other for who they are and not trying to change them Baby, Zoe is worried about not letting that bacon go because that is really what it's boiling down to is you're a vegan, don't try to make me be a vegan. I like meat, don't try to, don't, don't, don't try to change me to eat meat. You know, that's really what it's all about. And so, <laughs> Zoe, again, she's not ready to let that bacon go. She said it's going to be a cold day in hell. So back in the spring, Joe, Jenna asked Zoe, has she done anything to make Zoe feel like she wants to change her, right? And Zoe was like, um, yeah. Look, I haven't seen it. I don't know. Maybe I blinked once, twice, three times. Who knows? And I missed it. But I really have not seen Zoe, I mean, Jenna, try to change Zoe, I've seen her explain to her why she's a vegan and what that means and what she's eating, but I have not seen her try to change her. I think I saw her try to, um, she did offer her some food to taste, but in a way, I could be wrong, but I'm just saying, I ain't seen it, okay? So, <clears throat> I'll just leave it at that. So, in her confessional, Zoe was like, I don't feel like uh, Jenna wants to change me, but she can't help but try. And that's off-putting to me. Look, either she want to change you or she doesn't, which is it? You know what I'm saying? So Jenna said, after today, I don't know if we will be able to get past this whole vegan thing. Because, baby, Jenna got up out there at that hot spring and she left Zoe sitting there like, Psh. And so, um... All I could think was like, are you serious? Like, y'all are not going to give things a try because y'all have two different ways of eating? Like, really? Y'all going to throw potentially a good relationship away because of that? Ay, ay, ay. Like, again, I don't eat pork or beef, but I never let that stop me from having a relationship with someone who eats all things. Like, that's you, boo. You do you, and I'm going to do me. You know what I'm saying? Uh, girl, I don't get it. I don't get it, y'all. But anyway, so we see Jess and PJ again. They're not progressing. By this time, y'all, all the honeymoons are starting to come to an end, right? And so uh, Jess was just like, there's no spark, and she doesn't know she wants to waste her time. So, what, are you finna tell him this is it? Like, I want to know. So, over with Zoe and Jenna, they come back together since, you know, they had their disagreement. Zoe comes out with some drinks. And so, she was just like, is this your peace offering? So, they sit down and they kind of talk about things. And Jenna asked her, is she thinking about the, the future too far ahead? And so, she said, no, 
Um, or does she usually think about the future too far ahead? So she said, no, not in normal situations. And Jenna said, well, with their conversation earlier, she felt like Zoe was trying to uh, find something wrong because she's not really interested in Jenna. And Zoe said, no, that's not it. I was just thinking ahead to how things will be for us, right? So she then asked Jenna, will the two of them work on the outside? And Jenna said, well, do you usually think about the negatives when dating? And that's kind of where Zoe is headed. Like, this, it's always, yeah, about the negatives. Negatives. Like, instead of just letting things be and flow, I can kind of see that about Zoe. But Zoe said, uh, so she asked her, do you usually think about the negatives when dating? Baby, Zoe said, there is no usual. <laughs> I said, well, okay then. She said she is in this for the long term and she's trying to make a commitment. There is no usual. <laughs> so Jenna said, hearing her say that gave her some relief. So she said that, that they can focus on the things that they have in common and not focus on their differences. And I think that is a good start. <laughs> so Zoe in her confessional said, I never thought, this process would be easy. I think the next chapter would be a big test again, right? And so, uh, we see Jess and PJ. They're having a little dinner for like the last night. They got a little entertainment going on. They spinning all the little fires. They even light up this sign that said, Just married with fire. And so he said, you know, let's talk about past relationships. So she ends up telling him about her ex and how he slept with her dad's ex-wife. And so she said that not only did it just upset her the whole by what happened, but also it upset her because of how it affected her family, her different family members. So she said, you know, it, um... So he ends up telling her that, you know, she's wonderful and he hates, you know, that that happened, that she had to go through those things or whatever. And so uh, he says that for him, he feels like every day is getting better, but he does question if she likes him. She says that she's usually all over the people that she's with, but she's not like that with him, right? And so she doesn't know what it is. It could be what she went through with her ex. And so PJ said, well, now this part he said in his confession that, hey, we might not be on the same page, but I really like her. So I'm going to give it 110% to see if there is anything there. So she said, we just need to give each other time. I said, mm hmm She ain't going to get there, uh, PJ. You and your 110%, she's not going to get there. Right? And so, uh... Lara and Rishi, they're having their last little dinner too. And so I think Lara is kind of self-sabotaging a little bit of uh, her own experience. Like she's not giving things a fair shot. And I believe it's because she wasn't physically attracted to him, right? So in her confessional, she said that she could tell he's falling, but she doesn't know if he's loving me or loving the idea of me. And so, as she's saying this, y'all, she's saying it through tears. Like, she's literally, like, breaking down in tears. I feel like I'm losing my little light a little bit. But that's okay. We about finished. We finna go and wrap this thing up, right? So, Richie uh, said he enjoys, uh, he has enjoyed Lara taking the reins. He said, with everything being so new, that he has lived mo most of his life alone. So he's had to take control and do all the planning. So he loves being able to just relax because he knows she would take the right. I told y'all, he wants a mama. So Lara turns around and said the exact same thing in her confession. She, she was just like, uh, he needs help. He wants somebody to mother him. She said, but she is not going to do that as you should not, Lara. I totally agree with you on that. You are not his mother. And so she tells him that they need to find like a balance so that both of their needs are being met. And she even, um, she's even talking to him like you would a child. Like, just, 
I can't mimic it, but as she's talking to him, it just sounds like she's talking to a, a child versus a grown man. I said, honey, he, he wasn't ready and she isn't trying. Like, the two of them just need to call it quick. So he turns around in his confessional, though, talking about he's so glad they're finishing their honeymoon on the high. I said, baby. <laughs> She said she was looking for someone to complete her, but not for her to complete somebody else. I said, mm, Lara, that sounds a little bit selfish, honey. Nah, but she went on to say she was disappointed. And I think that uh, Lara is just not, she is just wanting not, um, she, she's not just wanting, um, uh, not completing somebody but wanting them to complete her like i don't think that's what she really means when she said that how it came across i think she's just accustomed to doing everything for everybody and doing everything by herself and she just needs somebody to step in and do it for her sometimes and now that i can feel her own I could totally feel her on. Y'all know that I have a child with multiple disabilities, medical issues. So our day-to-day -day lives consist of me doing everything for him but breathe. Like, he, he's total care. And I say out of time, well, I joke when I say this. But sometimes, you know, when people joke, there's some truth to it. But I be like, I feel like I'm living for two people. And I do feel like that some days. It just gets so overwhelming sometimes doing it day in and day out. Like, I get dressed, I got to get him dressed. I feed myself, I got to feed him. I bathe myself, I got to bathe him. So I, I have to do everything for him. And like I said, I joke that, that I'm living for two people. I know I'm not because he is his own individual person with his own individual personality. And I just love him. But... You know, I can, I can, I can get her. It just weighs down. And, and some days I just want somebody to step in and take control so that I can just fool sigh. Like somebody come and just take care of me for a change or somebody come high five me out and be like, I got him. You go rest. Or you know what I'm saying? So I get her, even though she did say, um, she would want somebody to complete her. She didn't want to have to complete somebody else. I don't think that's exactly what she meant. Because to me, if she did, that's just plump selfish. Like, because any relationship is going to give, give and take. You know, if you wanted somebody to complete you, then you need to be willing to complete them. You know what I'm saying? But anyway, uh, I had that problem with my last ex too. Like, I, I, like, I'm not here to parent you. I am here to be your mate. So, don't put more on my plate. Just help take some stuff off as I do the same for you. You know what I'm saying? So, I think that's what she was really meaning. And, y'all, that was the end of the episode. That was how I ended. And next week, I think we really get into the nitty-gritty. They're going to have their first dinner party where all the couples are going to get together so I'm excited to see how that goes and just see how things are gonna be when they start when they start living together. So, anyways, uh that was it. Comment, tell me what you thought was good. What do y'all think about the four new couples? Will we who we got Larry and Richie? Mm, it's a no for me. We got Zoe and um Jenna. Like that could be so cute. But I think they're going to get in their own way, especially Zoe. Like, I think she just thinks negatively. And so, but I I hope not. Um, they are cute. Um, we got Keisha and Kwame. Um, they look very good together. Aesthetically beautiful. I don't think they're going to work. And then, who is our last couple? Who, oh, P, PJ and Jess. It's definitely no. Like, Jess is not going to let that go that he's a stripper. Anyways, let me know your thoughts. And until next time, I'll pray for you. You please pray for me. And what? We're going to watch God change things, y'all. Bye.